Hi guys, I'm Cody J, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Now, hopefully a few weeks ago you watched my video where I did a big Ulta haul and I purchased like, I think it was 52 new items from Ulta and today's video is gonna be about trying out those new products. So we're gonna be doing a full face of first impressions makeup using those products and hopefully this goes well. I pretty much just went through Ulta's website and just like pick things that look like they would be good. So hopefully they are. And there's a pretty large variety from different types of brands being a lot smaller or a lot larger, price points being very low or very high. So hopefully all in all, I have some good things. How much movement can, with my hands can I do in two seconds? Anyway, so if you guys would like to see me do a full face of first impressions with my makeup, keep on watching. Okay, so to get things started, like I said, I'm gonna be doing a full face of first impressions makeup. Now, I bought a lot of different products from Ulta a few weeks ago, and some of you may or may not have watched it. If you have not watched it, I would recommend going and checking it out. It's kind of a long video a little bit because we all know by now that I like to run my mouth a lot, I talk fast, I have a lot to say, and not a ton of time to say it, but I got a lot of different products, and today we're gonna be using all of those products, except for brows, because I don't actually have a new brow product to try, because the one that I bought that I thought was gonna work for me is significantly lighter and oddly toned, oddly toned? Sure, we're going with that, oddly toned, compared to my eyebrows, so it's just not gonna work, so tossed it. Actually, it's in the drawer, it's for somebody else now, but we can't use that, so I'm gonna be using my dip brow from Anastasia Beverly Hills. Other than that, I believe that's the only product that is not from my Ulta haul, but everything else should be, will be, it will be. So I'm gonna be using my Anastasia Beverly Hills dip brow in the shade Dark Brown, and I've been doing my eyebrows pretty quickly lately, like I don't carve them out anymore, it's hard to talk and do my brows at the same time. That's why I usually do them off camera. But I haven't been filling them in as much and as like, I don't know, dramatic. And I haven't been carving them. It saves me a lot of time. Like I used to dread doing my makeup just because of my brows and now it's not that big of a deal. So like, if you know, you know. And just like that, brows are finished. It actually only took me eight minutes instead of my typical like 20 when I used to carve them out. So we're already off to a good start. So the first real <laughs> first impression product is gonna be from Wonder Beauty. Never heard of them before. This is the Glow Ahead Illuminating Face Oil. Looks like this. And actually this wasn't from Ulta. A friend sent this to me to try out, but it's still a new product to me, so it falls in this video just fine. Oh, that's strange. That's weird. So I'm just gonna take this. I'm gonna use this in place of a primer, like a typical primer. It is actually pink, which is kind of fun because we love pink. Smells, ooh, smells like my great grandma Florence's bathroom. And that's not a good smell. It's very like old people-ish. Like we don't discriminate on age or anything on here, but when you think of like super old people, you think of this smell in my opinion. It smells like those fake bath soaps. I don't know. It just brings back memories from my great grandma's house. That's all I'm saying. Like it's not in a bad way, but it's like not in a good way either, you know? You know. So this product is supposed to help brighten, moisturize, and improve the appearance of skin over time while bringing out my inner radiance with illuminating oils. So we'll see if that looks good with foundation. And speaking of foundation, we're gonna be using the e.l.f. Cosmetics Flawless Satin Foundation. It looks like this. Now, picking shades off of the internet is like not a good thing. It's like not a fun thing and not good for me, especially because my skin tone changes all the time because sometimes I spray tan, sometimes I self tan, sometimes I actually tan. So right now I don't even know what this is going to look like. So I'm just actually going to put this on the back of my hand and do like three pumps of that and use my little beaky beauty sponge. So like, mm, this could be a good color. We'll see. So we're just going to start pressing it into the skin. Mm, that looks like it'd be good, especially when it dries down. So this is supposed to be a medium coverage foundation and you all know I pretty much prefer a full coverage foundation, but if you're a normal person, unlike me, who actually wears makeup every single day, you probably don't want a full coverage foundation all the time, especially because sometimes, yeah, it can get cakey, especially if you're not using a good product or you're using a lot of product in general. Um, I like full coverage foundations and full coverage products because I'm doing my makeup for social media and YouTube. So I want as much of a transformative kind of effect as I can get with my makeup. So full coverage does that, but there's nothing really wrong with obviously medium coverage and obviously to each their own. If you like a sheer coverage foundation all the way up to a full coverage foundation, that's your choice. Okay, so foundation is looking pretty good and it's actually, I think a perfect match. Like 
it looks perfect to me. Now, yes, like I said, this is a medium coverage foundation and it looks good on the skin. It doesn't look dry or anything like that, but it definitely is not the full coverage that I'm used to. And I don't think I want to go in with a second layer just because I don't you don't like it, it's my channel, and you can't really tell me what to do on my channel. You think you can, but you can't. So I'm just going to leave it at this and just move on with my makeup. Okay, before I move on to concealer, I did forget that I want to try out this NYX Control Freak Brow Gel. I've never used a brow gel before, so this is in clear. So we're going to see what this does and how it does and if it holds up. So I'm just going to brush this through my brows and just kind of make sure they're coated and bring them over and lay them flat. Same thing over here. It's gonna give a nice little coating. I can definitely see that it's like starting to separate the hairs. So obviously the product's getting on my brow hairs and then I'm just laying them flat. I have a lot of wonky eyebrow hairs, like one in the middle and this one and the very end they like stick out. So hopefully this helps a little bit. Okay, on to concealer. I'm gonna be trying the e.l.f. Hydrating Camo Concealer in the shade Fair Beige. This is also a satin finish like the foundation. So that's great that they're both the same. Now I've been intentionally leaving some foundation away from my under eyes because I've been having a lot of issues. You see where these natural little creases are right here and here? Like that's my eyelid. That's not product. There's not even any product there. And I just messed up my foundation that is over here. <laughs> just kidding. Give me a second. Okay. There's not actually any product underneath my eyes. I just have really prominent lines, I guess. And there's nothing I can really do about it. So when I put product there, I always crease no matter what. It doesn't matter what kind of concealer or powder I use. So I'm going to try and start applying it a little bit differently and see if it helps a little bit because nothing looks worse than when your makeup looks bomb but then you have like these crusty crunchy under eyes like bleh, no so i'm going to take this and i'm going to put a little bit on the outer corner right here i'm going to do a little bit right here and just kind of bring it down i like to illuminate the side of my nose a little bit more especially when i'm contouring it just kind of all comes together i'm going to put a little bit out here and then I'm just gonna try and blend it where I need it. And let's do like one dot right there and like one dot right there. That works for me. Oh, like the rest of the face, hello. So I'm just gonna start putting some in the typical areas and I'm gonna go down my nose. Like, look at this applicator. That's massive. Like, what in the world? Anyway, I'm gonna put a little bit right here. And then let's start blending. I'm gonna do all of this first because I want to let the concealer around my eyes kind of like settle in a little bit because if you let your concealer sit in place for a few minutes it'll start increasing the amount of coverage that you will actually have once you blend it all out so i don't want to use a lot of product under my eyes especially because i'm getting a lot of creasing lately but i still want a little bit of coverage so i feel like if i use less product but let it get more full in coverage if that makes sense it'll look better so hopefully it performs better too now i'm going to take this and take it up a little bit just because i want to start making my eyes and my face look a little bit more sharp and lifted and this obviously gives the appearance that my eye is lifted because like look over there flat but over here it looks like whoosh, whoosh. so i'm going to stamp this on i'm going to blend around and i'm going to take it down the side of my nose now i'm not really moving the product necessarily i'm just kind of stamping it in place and letting it naturally blend itself out now when i get to this inner corner which i'm right now <laughs> I will like smooth it a little bit just because it's a little wrinkly right there because I'm 25 and that's kind of like time for wrinkles. And then whatever product is left on the sponge right now, I'm just going to gently and lightly, I guess it's the same word, <laughs> gently and lightly take it across my eye just to make sure there's a little bit of product but not too much. Okay, for setting powder, I also do not have a new one. I literally did not see any setting powders that remotely looked good for me. So I'm just going to take my Magic Star powder and with the same little sponge that's kind of damp still, we're going to dip into it a little bit and I'm going to immediately look up and I'm going to press this into my eye and really try to make sure there's no creasing while I'm doing so. So I'm kind of smoothing it out and pressing decently hard just to make sure everything is smoothed out while the powder is going in. And hopefully this will prevent any creasing because Cody's not liking it lately. I'm just hoping that I find a way of doing my under eyes that will prevent this creasing because it's honestly aggravating like it's it's very annoying because you guys don't always see it but right before I'm doing an eye look or taking photos or showing off my finished look I always have to smooth out under my eyes again so I'm getting ready to go to BeautyCon New York this year and the last thing I want to do is go out in public with makeup that looks amazing and then they see my under eyes and they're like <laughs> you know 
Okay, so before I move on to the rest of my face makeup, I'm gonna prep my lips with a little bit of this e.l.f. lip exfoliator. Comes in the flavor, I guess, if you will. Sweet cherry. I do love a sweet cherry moment. Oh, not the cap, I need the whole thing, thank you. So it comes in this little lipstick component and it doesn't smell like cherry. If my ferrets don't go to sleep, oh my God. So it does not smell like cherry, but like, it doesn't taste like cherry either. So we're just gonna go along our lips and exfoliate them. How's this exfoliating? Oh, there's the grittiness. Okay, so like the top of it wasn't gritty, but like once you start going, it gets gritty. Okay, there it is. Okay, how nice. Now it tastes like cherry. It's super gritty. Okay, I was gonna say like, what kind of scam is this? And there's a lot of product in there. Like that should last a little while. So loving that. So let me grab the old paper towel. Remember when the pandemic hit and everybody thought there was gonna be a shortage of toilet paper and paper towels and everyone went crazy and stocked up and nobody could get it when they actually needed it? Huh. Mm, okay, they feel very nice, very smooth. Like you can tell my lips are pretty red now because they're exfoliated and plump, but like, okay. I'm getting lip filler in a couple days. I don't know when this video is gonna be up on my channel, but like I'll be getting lip filler in the next, what, three days? Mm, yeah. Okay, so moving on to bronzer. I'm using my first ever, I think it's my first. Oh my gosh, it's my first ever. Is it my first ever? I think it's my first ever Kylie Cosmetics product. This is the pressed bronzing powder in the shade Toasty. So let me just open this bad boy up. Looks like this. Now, doesn't smell like anything. I will smell every product always because I'm just curious. So it's very soft, like if I tap into it, over there. If I tap into it, it looks like that. So mm, don't love that because hello. So I'm just gonna tap off any excess and start bronzing the face. Now, I typically like to use my bronzer in place of my contour. Like sometimes I'll use contour and that's it. And sometimes I'll use a bronzing powder and that's it. It just honestly kind of depends on what I'm feeling like. So I do kind of like using my bronzer instead just cause it kind of gives me more of a warm glow to my face while giving me like some structure, you know, you know. Okay, so I'm gonna take a smaller brush like this and I'm gonna dip into the same bronzing powder. I'm just gonna go down my nose just to give it a slight contour. I'm just gonna go right down the bridge, but like to the left and right a little bit. Same thing on the other side. Now I usually make it a little bit more harsh than I need to. That way when I use my sponge to kind of blend it out a little bit, I still will get that structure from it without it being too harsh. But we like it to be a little bit harsh at first. So I'm gonna take my sponge that has whatever foundation left on it and just start stamping over it a little bit. This will take down the intensity while still leaving a little bit of that structure or else it would be pointless. Okay, so on to highlighter, I'm gonna be using an Essence Cosmetics Pure Nude Space Lighter. This is in the shade Be My Space Light. It looks like this. It's really pretty. It looks like someone put their finger in it, but it, they didn't. It kind of has a greenish pink cast to it. So I'm gonna use a brush like this, which I always do. And first I'm gonna spray my face. This is from e.l.f. Cosmetics. This is a hydrating coconut mist. It's supposed to hydrate my skin, refresh my makeup with hyaluronic acid and vitamin E. I'm just gonna give this a nice little shake and let's mist. Ooh. Okay, for some reason, why is that all over my finger? Mm, that's refreshing. I really like that a lot. So I'm gonna dip into my highlighter and it is a baked highlighter, like I said. So sometimes you have to go in a little bit harder, but I'm just gonna put this on my high points of my cheeks and along the bridge of my nose here in a moment. And I'm gonna put a little bit on the tip, just the zip. I don't like a super blinding glow, but I want enough to where when the light hits it that you can see it but nothing crazy. And this highlighter looks like that's what it's doing. So like, you can kind of see it has like the pink cast to it. Like in person, it's kind of pinkish green. Not so much, not a lot of green. There's a little bit in person, but on camera, it's definitely pink, but it's enough to where when light hits it, you see it. You got a nice little glow, but it's nothing crazy. I'm gonna put a little bit above my brow bone just because, just when it catches that light, you know, you know. Okay, so I think we're now gonna move on to the eyes. Okay, so to prime my eyes, I'm just gonna use my P. Louise base because I don't have any other type of new base. And this one is my holy grail and it's amazing. So I already know that, but I need to find a new base just to try something different. I've pretty much only used this and the Anastasia Beverly Hills one. I don't love the ABH one, but I don't dislike it either. 
For me, it performs well. It's just a matter of the consistency. Okay, so now that my lids are primed, the eyeshadow palette I'll be trying out for the first time is from Pat McGrath. This is my very first Pat McGrath palette, and this was actually sent to me by one of my J-Babies, so thank you so much for sending this to me. She also sent me this little face oil that we used in the beginning, so I'm very excited about trying it out. Now, I've heard a lot about Pat McGrath, more so that they're extremely expensive, but people say that the quality of the products, I guess especially the eyeshadow, is worth the money, I personally can't imagine ever spending over $100 for an eyeshadow palette. I just think that's abysmal, like there's just no reason for it. But this palette is very small, looks like this, like only a couple shades in it. It's just very, very, very small, like the pans are super, super small. So I don't know how much was paid for for this palette, um, like I said, it was a gift, but I do appreciate it regardless. Obviously, I'm just saying that I'm sure it's kind of pricey still because it's a Pat McGrath palette and I just don't understand why they're so expensive. So with these colors, we're definitely gonna have a darker color story going on just because kind of have to. And I just wanna use just this palette. So I think to get started, I'm gonna take, let me find a good brush to use. I'm gonna take mm, this brush right here. Come on, focus, focus, thank you. So I'm gonna take this brush and I'm gonna dip into Hmm, I don't have many choices. There's there's only like three. Oh my god, is there only two? There's only two matte shades, which is the brown and the black, and the rest are shimmer. So like, I guess we're going with the brown first. So tapping into it, there's not a lot of fallout, so I guess that's good. And I'm just going to go where my crease is and above, and I'm just going to take this and kind of start tracing my crease area. Like I said, I'm going above it a little bit. But we're going to trace it and then wing it out. Okay, so I have like this winged out shape and it's really pigmented right off the bat, which I like, and they feel very soft and buttery. So that's a plus, like they literally feel like butter. So I'm just gonna give it a little bit more just because I want to. Okay, so it's kind of got a weird shape to it right now, but like we'll get there. So I'm gonna take this Morphe M506 brush and I'm gonna dip into the black because it's kind of the only option we really have right now. And I'm gonna take this and put it actually like in my crease. I'm gonna stamp it on. I'll take it down a little bit just because I wanna leave a lot of the brown there. And stamping's not doing a great job with this shadow, so we're gonna like just blend it, I guess. So now I'm gonna take that first brown shadow. I'm just gonna kinda go over it again just to bring back a little bit and just blend it further. Okay, so now I'm gonna take a little bit of my P. Louise base on the back of my hand, and I'm gonna take a, ooh, I'm just throwing stuff all over. I'm gonna take a flat brush like this, which is usually my go-to crease cutting brush. I'm just gonna stamp into the base a little bit and start cutting my crease just slightly. Now when I say cut your crease slightly, I don't mean slightly, I mean, the full thing, the full shebang, the full wing, like get into it. So I think what I wanna do now, something a little bit more creative, just cause I'm feeling a little creative. And I'm gonna, what brush do I want? I'm gonna take this brush just because, and I think I'm gonna dip into a little bit of this color right here. And then we're gonna go into the purple. I'm not taking it all the way up though. I'm gonna leave a little bit of a gap just for I don't know, because I want it to look cool. Okay, so mm, looks kind of cool, I guess. So I'm just gonna take the purple and start stamping it on just to brighten it up a little bit and give it a little bit more dimension because it definitely was not shiny enough in the first place. So I think that's good enough for me for this eye. I need to do a little bit of shadow underneath my eye. So I'm gonna take a brush like this, my Makeup Shack T14 brush, which you can use my friend Rocio's code to save some money, and we all like to save some money. So I guess I'm just gonna go into the brown shade because everything else is super dark, and we're just going to brush it underneath our eye and hope that it's not too much. Just go all the way across. Now, whatever is on this brush, I'm gonna wipe off onto a paper towel and just kind of go over it again just so we can hopefully diffuse it a little bit so it makes it look a little bit softer. With that same brush again, I'm all about using the same brushes because it's just convenient. I'm gonna take a little bit of the gold right here and we're gonna pop that, I almost broke my mirror. We're gonna take that gold and we're gonna pop it in our inner corner, in our inner corner. There we go, yeah, sure. Just kind of give it a little 
pizzazz. Okay. So I'm only gonna do one eye on camera, obviously, and I'll do the other one off like usual. So for mascara, we're also using Pat McGrath Labs Fetish Eyes Mascara, also a gift sent to me, and whoa. So that's a fat little guy right there. So we're gonna take this, and hope it's not gross, and start doing our lashes. Okay, the way this separates my lashes is like really pretty. I don't know if you can tell on camera, but like really pretty. So I'm gonna take a little bit of this black liner. This is from NYX Cosmetics. It's the Epic Ink Liner. It's just in black and it's very fine tipped, which I hopefully will like. I don't typically do eyeliner like this because I don't have the steadiest of hands, but we're gonna to try today. So, ooh, I need a moment of silence. Okay, that's enough for my little hooded eyes. Like, hello. Oh my God. Okay, okay, we're good with that. We are good with that. We have hooded eyes. We don't need some crazy big wing, but like it's enough to like do something. And when, my, when I tell you my heart was pumping, my heart was pumping. Now it's just a matter of like replicating it on the other side, which is probably not gonna happen. But um, yeah, so off camera real quick, I'm gonna throw on some lashes, I guess. And I will do my other eye and I'll be right back. Alrighty guys, I just finished the other eye off camera. This is what we got going on. Like first off, when do you ever see me do a wing? Never, but like, here we are, like doing bigger and better things. The shape is pretty close to being similar, but let me get over really close to you. I think it's absolutely beautiful, to be honest. I threw on my Makeup Geek lashes in the style Graceful, which is my favorite, and you can use code CodyJ for 10% off your order. And I actually just uploaded a video on the new Soft Focus Shadow, so please check those out if you have not already done so. Um, the liner, the Epic liner, was absolutely amazing. It was just so precise and so beautiful, and I love it. Um, so let's just move on to our final step, which is lips. So to line my lips, I'm going to be using a ColourPop lippy pencil. This is in the shade BFF3. Now I never line my lips first, but here we are. Okay, so I decided to not only line my lips with this, but obviously fill them in as well because I was kind of liking the color. And I'm going to take a little bit of Bella & Co. Gloss, which, no, it's not a first impression, but I'm using it. I'm just going to stamp a little of this all over. <laughs> Ooh, we love a little shine now and again. Okay, so I'm going to give my face one last spray of this e.l.f. Hydrating Coconut Mist. Mm, that smells so good. And let's run through my final thoughts on all of these new products. So starting off with the Wonder Beauty Glow Ahead Illuminating Face Oil. I don't personally see a difference in glow. It didn't make me feel super hydrated or moisturized. So for me, kind of a miss. Don't really love it, don't hate it. Just kind of like unnecessary if you ask me. Next up for foundation, we have e.l.f. Flawless Satin Foundation. Again, this was in the shade, what, natural? Yeah, natural. Um, I like it, I like the component. It's kind of sturdy, like it's not some cheap little thing. Um, it's got a pump, which we all know and love, of course. Um, it, it looks nice on the skin. It definitely has a satin finish. The coverage being medium does look medium, but I, like I said, personally prefer a full coverage moment, but for a medium foundation, it does look beautiful. It definitely is a foundation where you could build up the coverage. I just didn't really want to, so we didn't. For concealer, I did the e.l.f. Hydrating Camo Concealer. This is also a satin finish. Um, the doe foot applicator on it is kind of huge, which I don't love. I prefer something a bit smaller, but it blended out very nicely. It has a decent amount of coverage, and I really didn't get a lot of creasing under my eyes. Also, combined with my little new technique, I think it worked out pretty good. I do like this a lot. For my eyebrows, I use the NYX Control Freak Brow Mascara. Like, they definitely are in place. They're not moving all over the place, which is nice, but they're not like crunchy like I thought they would be. So that is a plus for me. Next, we have the Kylie Cosmetics Toasty Bronzer. I liked this bronzer. I think it had a really nice color to it, and it definitely is pigmented, except it kind of has gone away throughout this video, which I've only been filming for about 50 minutes, and all that you see left is kind of on my cheeks. Everything else is very, very faint compared to what it was when it went on, so not really sure I'm loving that too much. The highlighter from Essence Cosmetics, this is the Pure Nude Space Lighter. I think this is super beautiful because it's not super bold over the top, but definitely has a nice pink tone to it and it catches the light and it looks pretty. It's just not overwhelming, which for me personally, I like that. For 
the eyes. I use the Pat McGrath Labs palette. Um, I don't actually know what this one is called. I don't know if it actually says anywhere. Mm, we're gonna go and no on that one. So I like this palette. I don't like that it's small, and I know it is kind of pricey. Um, I like that it does have a little mirror, I guess, if you want to use a mirror. I don't personally ever use the mirror, but it's nice to have the option if you want it. Um, I don't like the limited amount of colors in it, and although there's not a lot of choices, they did perform pretty well. As you can see, they are very pigmented. I really liked the blendability of the brown. The black was a little bit hard to work with, but when you kind of got it finally starting to blend out, it worked pretty well. Um, I don't think the packaging is great because I didn't go in too hard with these shadows with my brush and as you can see they're kind of like falling out of the pan. Those two are. So that's not a great thing. Not the pan, the component. Um, I don't really think that's a good thing. The Pat McGrath mascara was actually very, very good. It has a huge applicator which surprised me but it worked very well and I would like a full tube of this. The NYX Epic Liner was stunning, it's perfect, it worked so well, it's very, very black, it went on very smooth, there was no skipping, it's a very fine tipped felt pen. I definitely will be using this again, and you'll definitely see a lot more wing action going on, like look at that, like, ooh, actually living for it. So, for, what else did we do? Lips, I lined them and filled them in with my ColourPop Lippy Pencil. Um, it's very creamy, it wasn't super easy to make them very precise because since it's creamy, it kind of dolls down very quickly. Um, I wasn't putting a lot of pressure in it, so it's just kind of a very soft product. And for setting spray, I actually just used a hydrating coconut spray from e.l.f. Cosmetics. It feels very nice, very refreshing. It smells really, really good. So that's pretty much all of my first impressions on these products. Overall, I'm very happy with all of these products and I'm glad that I spent some money on them. I do have a ton of other eyeshadow palettes and other products that you'll be seeing in other first impression videos as well as other videos. I literally have a paper over here that has 47 video ideas. Like 47 videos is crazy to me. So I'm trying my best to start filming all of these in the next couple days. So hopefully we have a lot of new and fresh and amazing content. Um, I think that is all I have for you guys. If there are other products that you want to see on this channel or any video ideas, please make sure you comment below and let me know. Your feedback is invaluable to me and it helps me grow as an artist, a creator, and a YouTuber. And I want to make sure I'm delivering you guys the type of content that you want. So that is all I have for you guys today. If you'd like to keep up with all things Cody J, you can find me on Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, and TikTok, all at Cody J Artistry. And of course, if you enjoyed today's video, please make sure you give it a big thumbs up down below. Click that big red subscribe button so you can join my YouTube family. Turn on my YouTube video post notifications by clicking that bell icon and switching it to all. And you can now sign up for a YouTube membership on my channel. There are four different levels to choose from. Each comes with their own exclusive perks. So if you'd like to sign up for that, I would really appreciate your love and support with that. And Thank you guys so much for watching today's video, and I will see you in the next one.